So a lot of you will remember our friend Savvy, Savannah Meisner, who has uh, made a big name for herself. The family has moved out of state to Texas, but she was a early speaker against the tyranny of the Charlottesville City Council. The young lady, when she was, I think, around 13 years old, went up and gave him an earful. Then she got the Schilling Show Citizen Patriot Award along with Ashton Ryan one year and now went on to produce a series of videos. Uh, one of them recently tweeted out by President Trump. Uh, and garnering millions and millions of views. So Savannah's doing a great job. But I was just looking at her mom's post on Facebook about how Savannah's been censored uh, in talking about some of the COVID truth that the big media, the big electronic media, doesn't want you to hear about. And we're going to get into this right now with Dr. Brian Artis, the CEO of Artist Labs, on this COVID censorship and what's behind us. Uh, Dr. Brian Artis, welcome to The Shilling Show. Thank you very much, Rob. Glad to be on the show. So you have a, a history and a mission here that's very personal to you, and I think it's important, if you would please, to share briefly with our audience why this is important to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, in February of this year, 2020, my father-in-law actually entered a Texas hospital with a with a headache and a stomach ache. Uh, the doctors at the hospital diagnosed him with the flu. They then started immediately giving him uh, medications such as antibiotics and IV fluids and then followed specific hospital protocols that ended up within four days causing his kidneys to fail that then filled up his lungs with fluid and they misdiagnosed him with pneumonia when he actually had pulmonary edema or water inside of his lungs because the medications and the protocols they used shut down his kidneys that excrete water. Now he's retaining all the fluids they're pumping into him and he on the sixth day went unconscious by day 12 he was dead based on actually the protocol solely that were done in the hospital my goodness it's it's a tragic story and and it shows us that we all have to be paying attention to what's going on and we all want to get to the bottom of things and get to the truth we're talking with dr brian artis and we're talking about covid censorship so a few days ago there was something they called the white coat summit and my goodness, what a conflagration this has caused. Would you tell us uh, what this was and, and who was participating? So there was what was called the frontline doctors. They came out and did a presentation and tried to reduce the fear that is so widespread by the media, of course, uh, around COVID. And the truth is, the, the one thing people fear the most about contracting COVID is ultimately the worry of dying as a result of this infection. And the truth is, this whole presentation was censored. I already saw it on the very first day at 3.5 million views on mm -hmm. Facebook within just a few, like within two hours. And then I saw it was taken down the next day off of Facebook and YouTube, which is atrocious. Uh, because the one thing that we would love to actually offer as clinicians, as physicians, is, is the fact that there's hope and there's actually clinical experience and knowledge behind how to treat the human body. The truth is, people should be more fearful of what the NIH and the CDC are saying doctors need to be using and prescribing in hospitals as the primary protocol for COVID. And that primary pushed medication they are suggesting for treating COVID is called remdesivir. And your audience needs to know this. When I uncovered this about a month ago, I had no idea. But remdesivir actually has never been FDA approved for any medical condition or infectious disease ever in America. Come May of this year, during COVID, the FDA was encouraged by the NIH and the CDC to instill what's called an emergency use authorization, even though the actual drug has never been FDA approved when there have been many other medications that doctors in this country are currently using to help people cure themselves of COVID and prevent some catastrophe like you're seeing with the current protocol in place. And as of last week, we actually saw record numbers of deaths in America. They are actually being caused by the same protocols instilled in the hospitals that killed my father-in-law in February. The same protocols inside of hospitals right now, including remdesivir. Remdesivir has had two quoted studies that they are backing as evidence to support using this drug for COVID. <clears throat> One of those studies was on Ebola. It actually was stopped by the safety board halfway through the study because it had a higher mortality rate of the other three experimental drugs. 
it didn't even finish the trial because it killed so more people than any of the other drugs. So they took everyone off of remdesivir. This is one of the drugs they're saying it was found useful in, and it was not. I have all the studies to support this and give you all the information on it from the New England Journal of Medicine. And then a second study in China, if you don't mind me sharing this, your audience needs to know this. Yes. In China, the, the manufacturer of remdesivir is called Gilead. They conducted a cohort study, a small study on 53 COVID patients in China just three months ago. When they gave them remdesivir, 23% of them within 10 days had these four serious reactions. This is 23% of them. They either had multiple organ failure, or they had acute kidney failure, or they had septic shock or hypotension, which all four of those are lethal. 8% of the total of the people had to be taken off remdesivir by day five because they were so ill as a result of the side effects from the drug. These two studies support the fact that remdesivir has a higher mortality rate. It is a poison that, shut down, that shuts down multiple organs, leads to kidney failure, and this is exactly what you're hearing hospital administrators and medical doctors talking about in the media is so frustrating to them. When they start treating COVID patients in hospitals, they're reporting that not only are they having a hard time getting ventilators for breathing treatments for the lung issues associated with COVID, but from the moment they start treating them, they notice there's this kidney failure occurring that they don't know if it's coming from the virus, but it's actually coming from remdesivir. It's proven it causes kidney failure. And in China, there were multiple studies on COVID where they said five times more Patients who experience acute kidney failure while being treated for COVID, they die five times more often than the patients who have COVID alone. So when I say you should be warned that when you go into a hospital, you should demand a different protocol, beware of remdesivir. This drug is harmful. It has never been evaluated fully for efficacy or for safety by the FDA. It has been encouraged and pushed to be put on the market and to be pushed into hospitals, but this is a detriment to a lot of people, and I believe it's one of the sole causes, if not the major cause, for death in these ICUs for severe COVID patients. Dr. Brian Artis is our guest for just a couple more minutes. I'm very curious, and I want you to draw the line directly here. Why is it, who stands to benefit from the promotion of remdesivir? Well, as far as I know, only the owners of Gilead, the, mm -hmm. the manufacturers, and any of the investors. And it's hard pressed to imagine that the NIH, the CDC, aren't, d does not have an invested interest in this. Why else would you push a dangerous drug on so many? And then why would you suppress the hope by so many other medical doctors that are pushing FDA-approved drugs? Upwards of 70 years they've been approved, hydroxychloroquine, budesonide, uh, chloroquine. I mean, there's multiple medications that are being used to help solve the solution when uh, there's a drug being pushed by obviously someone, not me, but by somebody who's going to benefit from it. I mean, remdesivir right now for one treatment, five treatments, is three thousand two hundred dollars. Mm. You can handle, you can handle COVID with hydroxychloroquine for less than twenty dollars if you actually had a copay for the actual drug as the generic of Plaquenil. So who sets to gain? Anyone who's sitting back, either the lobbying powers of the pharmaceutical companies, which are the largest in the government and have been for decades. Someone's pushing these initiatives in these federal agencies, and they're not looking out for your best interest, not your health anyway. And I've got a report. If you email me at doc, D-O-C, at artistlabs.com, my last name, A-R-D-I-S, labs.com, I've got a 13-page report free, I'll send it to you, that has all of the links to the studies backing the dangers of remdesivir, and then also the protocols of several MDs, including Dr. Richard Bartlett, out of Odessa, Texas, who's cured every single COVID patient he has seen since March, which is over five a day, using a five-day protocol, using a 20-plus year FDA-approved medication, and it's completely safe, 100% effective, and would cost a, a patient no more than $200 out of pocket to complete the entire five days worth of treatment. There are options, there are hope, and I also have my nutritional protocol there that helps boost the immune system and actually helps you clear viruses from the inside. And so those reports need to be available to you. Your audience needs to know that they don't need to live in fear, and that's one of the messages of Dr. Richard Bartlett, MD also, is that they've already found a cure for COVID. Remdesivir is not proven safe. I would highly, highly recommend 
anyone who has a family member struggling with COVID, that you stand up and ask and demand of the doctors a different protocol, and you can print out the protocols off my report directly from Dr. Richard Bartlett. I've got to ask you finally, Dr. Brian Artis, are they trying to shut you up? Is this message being suppressed in social media? What's interesting is I've received emails even of, as of this morning out of, out of Michigan from ER doctors who are saying they're trying to push this initiative to get people to be made aware that, that their voices are being censored. The medical doctors are having a hard time dealing with their voices being quieted. Mm -hmm. uh, no one has directly targeted me yet because all I'm doing is sending out factual stuff based on I'm actually quoting and sending links off of NIH's website, CDC's website, and the FDA. So whatever they're going to come at me with, all I'm doing is actually supplying the information and the quotes from their actual research. So, and their publicly, re or sorry, their peer-reviewed journals, which is the New England Journal of Medicine. So I have not heard anything yet. I will be, I would be surprised if I didn't. But uh, the truth is, there's answers out there, no different than what we experienced with YouTube and Facebook, where they took down the American Frontline Doctors presentation, where they tried to subdue the fear associated with COVID. People really don't need to live in fear. The fear is being generated by the media. There is answers. What you really should be in fear of is following the protocols. These two agencies, these three agencies, FDA now, CDC, and NIH are pushing for COVID treatment. Dr. Brian Artis, thank you so much for joining us today on The Shilling Show. And tell us again if people want to visit you online where they can do that. Uh, you can find me at uh, actually vocalnow.com. That's vocal with a K, V-O-K-A-L, now.com. And you can subscribe to my podcast show there. But if you go to doc at artistlabs.com and email me there, doc at artistlabs.com, I will send you free my entire report. Dr. Artis, thank you for being with us today on The Shilling Show. We really appreciate it. All right, let's go to the break. Coming back, another side of censorship. Dan Gaynor joins us from the Media Research Center.